Do you ever feel like you've been going round in circles? Well, I'm Linda Winner, and Linda McGeehy and I, the two Lindas, have been having lots of fun going round in circles. I'm the Education Director for Martelli Enterprises, and I've fallen in love with our Get a Grip material. If you don't know about it, check out our website, martellinotions.com, to learn more about why I love them so much. I love our Get a Grip material so much that I decided I was going to create my own line of templates. Since my last name is Winner, opposite of loser, I decided to call my business Winner Designs. I've come up with a bunch of templates, but today I want to show you the round offs. If you want perfect rounded corners for your sewing, quilting, and embroidery projects, then the round offs are for you. I want to show you the Get a Grip material, and you'll learn more about this later on. This material on the back, it grabs, this grabs, and it doesn't move. So you're going to see why this Get a Grip is such a wonderful thing. So I want to backtrack for a minute though and talk about the Ergo Cutter. This is what Martelli is known for. We came out with this cutter years ago, long before I knew Martelli. We have a right-handed 45 millimeter. This is a 60 millimeter. I'm left-handed and this is a 45 millimeter. And imagine that I've got a left-handed 60 millimeter as well. I've got videos that are going to teach you all kinds of things on the rotary cutter, but I want to give you some of the basics on this. So I'm going to move the right-handed 60 out of the way. And when you hold the rotary cutter, your hand position is completely different than any other rotary cutter. So what I've done is I've got it upside down. I'm grabbing it nice and tight in the palm of my hand. And with my fingers wrapped around, my pointer finger naturally falls right on top of the rotary cutter. There's a little bit of a dip in here. My finger goes in there and my thumb is gonna come somewhere on the side. I don't want it down here. I want it here, somewhere over here. So I want to open up my rotary cutter, expose that blade. Instead of flicking, you'll see a place in a minute that I'm going to be flicking. Instead, I'm going to roll forward. When I roll forward, you hear that click. The blade is now exposed. I want to show you the piece that I'm talking about, the flicking, right here. I've seen people at the shows that will come and they'll bring this back just like that. I don't want you to do that. I'm going to flick with my pointer finger or my middle finger and close that. So I'm gonna repeat that process. We're gonna roll forward, we hear the blade click, it's open, it's exposed, and now I'm gonna take my middle finger, stretch it past the tip. I'm gonna flip this over so you can see. I'm not back here, I'm past the tip, the tip of this red piece here, and then I flick that back and that closes my, my blade. So my blade is now protected, so I don't have to worry about it. So simple things on how to use this rotary cutter. I wanna talk about our body position. Body position is gonna be a big deal. So we're gonna pan up so you can see my shoulder. Most rotary cutters we've been taught to cut in front of our bodies. What I want you to look at though is where my blade is and where my shoulder is. Right here, my blade's at an angle because my shoulder naturally wants to go straight. If I start out here, it's going to turn to the left. I'm using my left-handed rotary cutter. Right-handers, you'd be going to the right. So instead of positioning here, I want you to relax your body, relax those shoulders a little bit, and from your shoulder, we're going to push forward. So when I go to push forward, we hear that blade exposed, and my blade is nice and straight. When my blade is here, that blade's at an angle. What does that mean? We're not going to cut all those layers of fabric that I want you to be able to do. When I'm over here and I roll forward, that blade is going to be nice and straight. that I'm going to spend a lot of time on today is the set of round offs. These round offs, there are three in the set and these are nested. What I mean by that is here's my largest round off and you can see that's nested. Here's my medium round off and here's my small round off. Now the cool thing about these round offs is they have radiuses. The radiuses are engraved on the outside of the templates. So right here, you can see here, I've got a 5.0, I've got a 4.0, a 5.5, and a 4.5. Each of these radiuses and the three sizes are completely different. So you have 12 different radiuses when you purchase the um, round offs. Now, the round off material, this get a grip on here is what's gonna allow me to grab. So when I finish off a project, round off a corner, and you'll see me do that and I'll show you a bunch of projects. This get a grip is on all three of these pieces. So I'm gonna take the largest size and I wanna show you what we can do with this. I've got a doggy mat that we have here. If you've done doggy mats, I do a lot of doggy mats for the Humane Society out of whatever fabric. 
You can put a nice binding on it. You can finish it off however you like, but all I wanna do is just sew it together like it's a pillowcase. So I've already done these two sides here and here, and I use the radius of 4.0. I've got my 4.0 right here. So what I wanna do is line this up. Now, what have I done to prepare? I've already squared off here and I've squared off here. So my edges are nice and straight. I need my glasses so I can make sure that I've got this lined up on the edge. If you don't have this lined up on the edge, then you're not gonna get exactly what you want. Now, I've got a bigger piece of fabric, so I can turn this if I want to. Do you see how that kind of moves with it? But I'm just gonna go ahead and cut along the edge. So I've got my blade so that it's not in the middle of my body. This would be in the middle of the body. Here it is coming from my shoulder, and all I need to do is just follow around that. I don't know if you noticed, but I hugged as I went along. I'm hugging this. I'm gonna pretend to cut here. As I'm hugging, what I mean by that is this is nice and snug. I don't have it off to the edge. If you've got it off to the edge, that top piece of fabric is gonna be different than that bottom fabric, and you may not even cut through that bottom layer. And when I line this up, again, I'm looking to make sure that my edges are all lined up and that I've got this template right along the straight edge here and the straight edge here. And when I go to cut, I'm simply going to cut and I hug that template, as I said. When I hug that template, this blade allows me to cut and get that exactly on the edge. What that's gonna do is give me four radiuses that are exactly the same. When I go to cut, you can see these are gonna be the same as the other below. But now I can go to the sewing machine and I have right sides out, so I would turn this inside so that I can stitch this. You can do, since it's polar fleece, you can go to your serger and serge along the edge. I probably wouldn't. I'd probably use a 3 8 or maybe half of an inch seam allowance and then stuff this really good for a nice dog. So the radius that you get here is what's going to give you those curves. I'm going to pull over a project that was kind of the inspiration for these round-offs. This is a double-handed oven mitt. And a friend of mine made this for me. And I don't know if you can see, but this radius doesn't match this, this doesn't match this, this doesn't match this. There aren't any of these radiuses that are exactly the same. How did she do this? She got a bowl and used the bowl. That's what we've all done, right? A bowl, a plate, a dish, a glass, and used that bowl to round these edges off. That's okay if you're doing one thing and you don't really care about the quality of this, but it's so much better, so much more accurate, so much quicker. And then you just decide what radius it is that you want. When I look at this, this radius, now I will tell you, this says Martelli, the others, Wiener Designs, that's me, that's my logo here. This was our version one. We were testing this out and I sold all of my Winter Designs. <laughs> so this one has Martelli. The other thing you'll notice about this centerpiece is that this piece, my small one, doesn't have the radiuses. This is a 1.0, this is I think a 2.5. You'll have, yours will be engraved. And if anybody has the version one, you can go to my website and I have a chart that tells you top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. But you'll see that this is an engraved right here. But what I mean by this is you can go in an addition. I'm gonna use this corner right here because that's fairly close. Can you see how close that is? That's a 1.0. We'll zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. You can see here that doesn't match. This doesn't match up, this doesn't match up when I try to line that up. When I flip this over, again, you can see this really doesn't match. This really doesn't match. So when you use a round off, all of your corners are gonna be exactly the same. I'll have directions for a project like this available on my website if you're interested in that. I wanna take this concept and show you what else you can do with that. All right, you may or may not know this material. This material here, when you're working in the oven or with your oven, when you're out uh, doing barbecues, those kinds of things, if you wanted to put this on the back side here and then do your pockets, this would be a great thing to do. When you use the round off, you're gonna be able to cut beautifully with this. I'm gonna grab a round off. I'm gonna use the top right here. And when I go to cut, I'll put my glasses on so I can make sure that's lined up. When I go to cut that, that's gonna allow me to round that off so that I've got a beautiful corner that's consistent. So we can do that on each of my corners so that these would match. If you're gonna add pockets, 
then these would match those pockets. So everything is nice and consistent. So you can play with other materials. I used polar fleece for the first project. You can do things like baby bibs. This is a baby blanket, a nice little small piece. You can see here, there's a pocket here with some beautiful embroidery. A friend of mine made this for me and did a really nice job. This was all done with the round off. So all of these corners, these radiuses are all the same. So that's another option. Same material that I have for the, uh, the double-handed oven mitt. This one is a placemat. Now placemats, a friend of mine, Carolyn, made this. Carolyn says whenever she goes to a barbecue, anytime that she's eating, your plate is here and your glass is up here, sitting on and off, so it falls over. So she makes placemats that are a little bit wider. And she wrote down the radius that she used so that if she was going to make a whole bunch of these, she'd remember. Medium round off, it's the medium size, and she used the 3.25. The other thing you can do with this, though, you don't even have to take notes on that, is you can take this, and when you look at this, do you see how this lines up perfectly? So that's exactly the same. I can see this one isn't it. This one isn't it. You can see that's a little bit narrower or actually wider, but it's narrower this way. So you can take notes on it if you want to, but that's a nice thing to be able to do is just to be able to measure. So you can make your own placemats. You can make all kinds of things with this for your kitchen. So we talked about polar fleece. On one end, kind of lofty. On another end, we've got this laminated material, this um, oil cloth. When you go to cut with the radiuses, with the uh, get -a grips this material is gonna grab. This get -a grip will grab. I'll place this on. Imagine I've got my glasses on and I've got that lined up. Do you see how that fabric stays with it? So when I go to cut, I can move this because this is a small enough piece. You'd square this off first so that all your pieces were nice and straight, and then you'd use this. So we can use something that's slippery like this, and you can make those cute little lunch bags, all kinds of things. This material, you get this from the Dollar Tree. If I wanted to make those scrubbers that basically are double-handed, imagine this smaller. I put a, a big elastic piece down here, that fat white elastic. My hand goes inside of here. I'd make it a little bit smaller, and this would be one of those kitchen scrubbers. You know, if you've got a boat and you need to clean that boat, it's simple for you to do. Can you see the radius here that I was able to cut earlier? So this material that's metallic, that's really rough, the uh, round-offs are great for that too. Here's another project. This, a friend of mine did this stitching for me. I don't know if you can see the scissors and the rotary cutter and the threads, all kinds of things. I've squared off first, I took the round off, and I think I used the large, and I rounded off here and I rounded off here. This, with a real quick stitch along the side, stitch along the side, you'd actually be going this way, stitch along the side, stitch along the side, turn it right side out, and it becomes a cute little carrying case. Now what I would do is not stitch around the side. Since I have our binding system that I love so much, I'd put binding on here first, and then I'd bind all the way around. Come down here, finish up, and it becomes a cute little, again, a storage case, a little purse, a little whatever it is. And if you want to put handles on there, it's a fast, easy project for you to whip up. If you're given gifts and you want to put something in, make this in a smaller size, and you can put the gift card, the you know, gift certificate, the whatever it is, you know, the check for whatever. So it's a cute little thing. Make this in whatever size you want. This is that quilted fabric that you're practicing. If you've got a long arm or you've been practicing free motion quilting at your sewing machine, take those scraps that you've done and do little storage bags for shoes and for your makeup and all those things when you're traveling. So you can do those kinds of things. That same concept, make yourself a flap and this on any kind of a bag, add a flap. And again, you can decide if you want to bind it or if you're going to stitch around with the serger, you decide how you want to finish that off. Flannel, polar fleece, here's some quilted material. This is that pre-purchase material. Same thing, make a cute little bag out of this. Take the round off. I'm going to bring this up. Imagine a nice rounded corner here. You decide on the radius that you want and that stitches up so fast. Add a zipper if you want to, add pockets, add straps if you want to. Again, really fast, really easy. And what this allows you to get is exactly the same. 
make this the same. You decide what it is that you want to do. If you want that one, that's going to be exactly the same as it is over here. So those radiuses, those rounded corners are going to be perfect, consistent. The next project that I have is a microwave bowl. Y'all may have done these before, but they've typically been square. This one, we start with a square, but then we use the round off to round off that corner. This corner is going to be the same as this, the same as this, the same as this. So you can use the round off for this. I'll also have a template that will come out and it'll have exactly where your darts will go. And that's going to be a new technique in our templates. It'll be really cool when you see that. So look for this in the future. This has your batting. The one word of advice that I have on these, if you decide to make these on your own without following any directions, cotton, 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 cotton thread, cotton fabric, cotton batting. If this goes in your, oven, or in your microwave, if it's not cotton, watch out. So I don't know what would happen. I don't want to take any chances. So cotton, 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 cotton thread, cotton batting, cotton um, uh, fabric. So it's an easy, fast project for you to whip out. This in the microwave. The other thing that I want you to think about is sticking this in your freezer. And then when you pull out your bowl, stick it in there, put your ice cream in there, and it keeps your fingers a little bit cold because we put this in the freezer, but this is gonna keep that ice cream from melting. Back to the microwave, if you haven't seen these things, this, the bowl goes in, the gazpacho, the soup, whatever it is, goes into the microwave like this. When you pull it out from the microwave, grab a corner, grab a corner, and pull that out. You don't have to worry about it popping, you don't have to worry about it spilling, don't have to worry about mainly burning. And when I go to hold this, my hands are protected because I've got that batting. Well, I hope you've gotten inspired and decided like Linda and me that going round in circles can be a good thing.